Hey guys, hi, it is, it is Tiffy T, the resale queen, getting my webcam fixed up here so that you guys can see me the right way. All right, so today we're just going to go into it and do the extreme unboxing uh, review for shows seven and eight, and I don't know why this camera is not working right now. Okay. There we go. Much, much better. So, uh, this extreme unboxing uh, show tonight um, had some gems in it. Um, it actually showed a lot of people making a lot of money, uh, which I'm always happy to watch on TV. People to you know showing people to make money. However, there are some some things that I think people need to learn and understand before they go into some of these things and just assume that what they saw on TV is going to always work out for them. So um, just, just do a quick recap of what happened on the first show, which is show seven. We have Bobby and Selena. They're in New York. Remember, they have a, re, a resale store, so they don't have to deal with a whole bunch of shipping costs. So they bought a home goods uh, electronics palette for $482. I don't know what the conditioning was. I'm assuming it was probably returns or maybe a combination of shelf pulls or whatever. I don't, they didn't really get into that, which that's one thing they, that I've noticed well with the show. They don't always tell you about the condition. Some, sometimes they'll tell you, sometimes they won't. And to me, that, that determines how much I want to pay for something. But we'll get into that at another point. All right. So they got uh, Home Goods Electronics. Had like a few coffee makers. Uh, nice uh, Ab360. Uh, just like exercise. little exercise thing. A um, couple of like, like a little electrolysis thing. They had a steam cleaner, which was nice. Uh, indoor grill set. Um, but the... The tale for this one is, I believe uh, Selena is the one that happened to see in the pictures Xbox. So the assumption was they were going to get an Xbox. That's not what they got. What they got was an Xbox headset. Now, it's Xbox headset. They're not cheap. But then again, you can't, they're not, you're not going to make a couple hundred dollars off of them uh, with, a, with a headset. They only had one. They kind of just banked on that. And that's, I don't know if they just didn't see, I don't know if it ha didn't have a manifest. We don't, we don't get that information off of the show. Um, but that's, if you have a manifest, that's why you read it. Um, so you can get a good idea of what you may or may not be getting. Um, one other sign, one other uh, cautionary tale is they had a box that said Cathalon on it. Now, um, if you're not in this game, that may not mean nothing to you, but I'm going to explain something about Cathalon. Um, I actually know a little bit about uh, about those things because back in my college years, long ago, um, I used to work the, um, the, the different housewares departments in a department store. So those reps for those uh, different cookware companies actually used to come in and do demonstrations for us to teach to teach us about basically how to sell a product so that we could do different demonstrations on cooking and things like that. Cathalon is a very expensive cookware. In fact, when I used to work there, um, whenever we had a sale, it always excluded Cathalon stuff. So that's a high ticket item, regardless of if it's a small pan. Uh, what this looked like it was was some type of, uh, I don't want to say Instapot, but something maybe sort of like that. Well, they opened up the box and it was somebody's grandmom's crock pot. Yeah, they could resell it for $20, but when you saw the Cathalon on the box, it, it kind of made you feel like, oh, yeah, okay, that's a good, that's good. And then they open up the box and that wasn't it. That happens a lot because that's why I assumed that they were getting returns. That happens a lot. You, you'll you get something that says or you'll get a manifest that will say, Cathalon such and such. You go open it up 
And it's not Cashalon. It's something, some other company you ain't never heard of or something from somebody's house. That happens. That's, that's part of the gamble. That's, that's, that's part of the job. That's what, that's what happens. But that was just a nice little cautionary tale for people to understand that those type of things happen. Um, other couple of things they got with the Instapot. They did get an Instapot in there. Uh, they got a nice uh, power air fryer, a clock that was actually kind of broken. Um, uh, so on their lot, uh, I always say lot, but actually it was a pallet. <laughs> uh, they paid $482. Their resale value, let me see what their resale value was on this one. Bobby and Selena. Yeah, they paid $482. The resale value was $1,790, which gave them a profit of $1,308. So not bad for spending almost $500. Not bad at all. It almost tripled your money. All right. So the next uh, group I want to go to is Joe and Jessica. Um, I'm a little concerned with people watching that particular segment and thinking and going out to do what they did. Um, they bought a pallet of salvage and it was beauty, uh, like beauty electronics. Um, okay. Let me go back and just explain a little bit things. If you're new to this and you're like, well, why is she talking about being so concerned? Salvage is basically the last resort for conditioning. So every time, if you ever go and look at a load, you'll see if it's new, customer returns, shelf pulls, or salvage. Salvage, just expect it's going to be broken and not work. Uh, so my husband actually has something that he likes to say about buying salvage loads. He always says salvage loads are for real experience, really handy, or a real gambler and remember that the house always wins <laughs> when it comes to salvage loads. So if you happen to be a person that's handy and you like to fix things or you can, or you're fine with doing a little bit of research of finding maybe either a part or contacting the manufacturer to see if you can get certain things replaced, go ahead and do a salvage load. Um, most places that do a salvage load are, they may give you a manifest. They may not. If they're giving you a manifest of a salvage load, you're going to pay more because they had to go through the time to go through the items to say, yeah, they're broken. This is what's broken. This is what's messed up. So you're going to pay more for those type of loads. So they got a salvage load that was for $1,058. Um, in the beginning of it, it was looking like they weren't getting any money. Uh, everything was broken, uh, used to a point that it couldn't be resold. Um, then what really saved them was they had a whole bunch of packages of ink cartridges. Now, ink cartridges, um, if you ever go and buy one, you will rec recognize that they have an expiration date. I'm assuming, because it wasn't discussed, that the reason why these uh, ink cartridges and toners were in a salvage load is because they were probably expired. Now, for a person that's new to this, they may say, oh, it's expired. I can't do anything with it. <laughs> you can still sell it. You just have to disclose that it's expired. So for someone who's new to the game, um, you don't take those and put them on, on Amazon. Don't do that. Um, Regardless, if you even notate that it's expired, just don't do that. Um, Amazon buyer, regardless of what it says in the product description, you can put all of that stuff in there, send it back, and they can still send it back and say they're not happy because they bought it through Amazon. So don't do that to yourself. You can do several different ways. You can put them on those, I call the call them the selling apps. Uh Put them on eBay, disclose that they are expired, take a picture of the expiration date, as well as put it in the product description. Uh, you can sell it locally, so you don't have to deal with shipping. But the thing that's nice with ink cartridges is shipping is cheap. They're uh, normally, they're not, they're not that heavy. So you can really, um, 
make a nice return on them. The, so this couple got really lucky. Um, they did have one thing that also helped them in their electronics. They had a Dyson hair dryer. Um, a, anything that starts with the word Dyson uh, normally is going to be a couple hundred dollars right off the bat. And if it's used, it's still a couple hundred dollars. Uh, getting something with the word Dyson on it, D-Y-S-O-N. I'm not talking about meat or anything. I'm talking about uh, a vacuum cleaner. And they are now moving into um, beauty products. Um, it's going to be a couple hundred dollars. So they ended up with a hair dryer that retails for $400. They could easily sell it for two, maybe 300. Uh, they did test it out. It does work. So they kind of got lucky. Um, they had some wall clippers in there. Um, things like that. So Joe and Jessica, um, like, remember what I said, if this is something that you're new to, new to this resale game, going the salvage route is not, is not for the weak at heart because if you are not comfortable with opening up a pallet full of things that are completely broken and you don't have the heart for it, don't spend the money on it. Uh, but they actually came out, I would say, okay. They spent $1,058. Uh, the retail, uh, I should say the resale value of what they were able to salvage from their salvage load was $3,330, which gives them a profit of $2,242. That's not bad, but I... I just want to give a cautionary tale to anyone that is just starting out. I, I would not start start out with salvage unless you have knowledge on how to fix things and you're and you're okay with seeing things that are broken because you can lo quickly lose your money on a salvage load if you don't know what you're doing. And maybe one day we'll go through that. <laughs> so, and then the next couple was Blake and Ashley. Now, Blake and Ashley, you're probably like that. I don't know who they are. Uh, Blake is, I think, normally with his brother on this, and Ashley is his girlfriend. She was on there before, I think, um, they had a scooter or something, and they needed someone that was skinny to ride the scooter because of the weight limit. Uh, so they got a bin load. Uh, I think the best way to describe that load is just a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, really seemed to me that the load was more electronics or like a plug load. Uh, plug load, meaning anything that plugs into a wall. Uh, they got, ended up getting like two, uh, they spent $450. They ended up getting like two printers, some drones, a po couple col uh, Polaroid cameras, some of those Vivitar cameras. Um, they got like a karate helmet. It had a whole bunch of fans in it, um, which I was like five or six, I think. Um, but the best part of, of of what they had got was a Scotty Cameron putter. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what that really was. I didn't realize the whole big value of that um, because it has to do with golf. I'm not a big golfing person. I do know, however, anytime I ever have anything that deals with golf, as in golf accessories or balls or whatever, they don't last long. They they are quick sellers. So uh, that would have been the first thing I listed um, uh, out of that load they got. So they only paid $450. Their resale value was $1,520. So they made $1,070. So they doubled their money. That's not bad at all. Um, no cautionary tales really with them. Um, my assumption is that it was shelf pools, which I believe is what, what they said they were. So only paying $450. I think they did really good. Uh, but that was my review of show number seven. Just, I just want to keep in mind if you are doing salvage loads or thinking about doing salvage loads, you may want to get with someone that is handy and knows how to fix things. Just, just a suggestion. If you already like that, then you're fine. Um, I have a husband that's already like that. So those things don't scare him. It's really all about how much time and effort you want to put into it so that you can get your money back and then some. So 
off to show number eight. So show number eight had Steve and Steph, uh, Chuck and Chris, and Pastor Paul and Heather. I, I like them. I, I don't know what it is about them, but I really like them. All right. So Steve and Steph, um, they're the ones that are like flea market sellers. Um, so they normally sell things locally. Um, they got an outdoor goods palette for $681. The, they were able to get a manifest on the item. And the reason why they wanted it was because of an HD gun scope. Um, it turns out they actually ended up with, with two gun scopes. Now, uh, just so that you guys are aware, um, when it comes to certain things with firearms, you do need to check out where you're listing those things. Um, some websites... Uh, because it's a firearm accessory, have issues uh, with with you um, posting those items for sale. And then you also have other issues with the fact that it's being transported state by, you know, leaving your state, going to another state. Um, may not know what all the laws are in another state. So I know that we've sold some in the past. And, and the only problem that we really had was the fact of where we were listing the items for selling. Um, just so that you're aware for us, uh, I think it was those little selling apps. Um, those were the ones that gave us the problem. So we kind of know now not to really go that route. Uh, also, you may want to watch Facebook because they sometimes don't like that either. Um, you know, you can normally sell those type of things locally. So just kind of keep those, keep that in mind because they got a scope that was worth a retail about 700 some odd dollars and they could easily sell it for 600. So being that they are people that sell locally, that's probably, probably why. So, um, but they got a lot of, a lot of nice stuff. It was an outdoor goods uh, palette. They had some golf club covers, remote control stunt bike, uh, some very high value um, binoculars. And I say high value, I'm talking like $400 for some binoculars, some boots, um, a couple like odds and end type things. But really, um, I thought they did a very good job with, with the palette that they got. So they spent $681. Retail, excuse me, resale value is going to be $3,281. Not bad. So their profit was $2,600. They did really good on that palette. Really, really good. So next we have Chuck and Chris. All right. So Chuck and Chris, uh, they got three palettes. And one thing to note was because, uh, they actually had free delivery. So probably because of how many pallets they they bought. Um, I don't know where it came from because they didn't say uh, they didn't say that, but I wonder if it was bulk because I thought at one point they had some type of um, promotion going on. But they didn't say if it was or wasn't. So I don't know if it came from them or not. But they ended up with um, well, no, I don't think it was bulk. The reason why I don't think so is because it does have a manifest. Bulk doesn't do that. So it was $1,050 uh, for their three pallets of outdoor and outdoor sports goods and general merchandise. So they had a lot of, a lot of good stuff. They had like gym equipment, like a real gym equipment. Um, uh, it was like a power gauge for like squats or something like that. They had like uh, kitty toys, like a kitty slide, a sofa sleeper sleeper um, mattress, um, a deck box, patio bench, um, then having like a bedside toilet that actually looked like it wasn't used. Um, I know they were a little concerned about that, but you know, it's TV. Uh, quite a few suitcases. Suitcases sell, by the way. Nice when you get them. Um, you, do, you do have to be concerned with shipping, but um, because they're oversized loads sometimes. So, but suitcases do very well. Uh, well, let's see what else they had. Even had a wheelchair in there. Ping pong, tabletop, uh, trampoline. 
So they did good with their three palettes. Um, they spent $1,050. And their resale value was $3,565 for a profit of $2,515. Not bad, not bad at all. And next, last but not least, is Pastor Paul and Heather. Uh, they spent $600 on military surplus. Now, what's nice about theirs and that I wanted to talk about was the way that they were able to get this was not through an auction or through a website. They have a relationship with a local, with a local person who has a, a contract with the military bases to get their military surplus. So due to their relationship with this person, they were able to just say, yeah, I'll, I'll spend $600 and, and get the palette. Um, when you can have those nice relationships, it's really nice because you can have someone call you and say, hey, look, I have a line on getting X, Y, and Z type of products. I know you guys like those. Um, you guys want it. I, I, I haven't gone through it yet. I'm paying X, Y, Z. If I can make a couple hundred dollars off of it, I'll be happy. Yeah, I'll pay six hundred. You know, it's 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 great for everybody because you get a low amount. They don't have to put it on a on an auction site. They don't have to go through it. They're just gonna basically slide that pallet over to you. So, uh, in the military surplus, they got uh, light bulbs. But what was really nice was they had those red military phones. Um. And they were calling them the, the red presidential phones. Uh, they were like the push button phones um, that people probably under the age of 20 don't know what they are uh, because they probably have never seen one. Uh, but they're like, they're the red uh, presidential phones that, you, that you're used to seeing on TV on the president's desk. And they had quite a few of them. And they, uh, what's really nice about that is they're kind of obscure. So people that are into that are going to pay for that. So that was really nice to see for them. Um, a lot of still toed uh, shoes. They even have some gas masks in there, um, which may sound odd, but things that are like, especially right now in a pandemic, that's like a prepper stuff. People buy things like that. I, I'm telling you, they buy stuff like that. Um, had a lot of different like odds and ends. Like they had like welding electrodes like a paint suit the filters for the gas masks um they had like a, a pack of the fingerless guards and it was like a whole like a couple boxes where so they could sell it as a box set um which is nice because you can move them faster that way than like selling individual ones and they paid six hundred dollars for their military surplus and their resale value was $2,476. And so they made a profit of $1,876. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, all in all, on the two shows, um, I think there's something to learn on both of them. Like I said on show seven, uh, be careful with salvage loads if you don't have a... Uh, I'm going to say a handyman mentality. Um, as you can, as I've probably talked to you guys about before, I'm not handy. I don't know how to fix things. However, I have a husband that does. So those things are, we don't shy away from. Uh, you do have to put time and effort into salvage loads. If a supplier puts time and effort into finding out what's wrong with everything and gives you a manifest, you're going to pay a little bit more for it because they did the work. Um, it might be worth it. Um, if you want to message me, I know a place that actually does do that. Um, you do need to come with some money. That's Those are not $400 pallets. Those are a couple thousand, but they will go through and tell you everything that's wrong with the item so that you know what to do with it. It's up to you if you want to make that money or not. So, oh, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, the next show, uh, show eight, the thing that I like um, that, that stood out to me was between Pastor Paul and Heather that they had a relationship with a local vendor. 
relationships in this business, I, I, can, I, can, I, mean, I can't even tell you how great that is uh, because I can tell you from just our personal experience that when you have a relationship with someone that knows your business, they know your market, they know what you like to sell, they'll keep getting the things that you that you like because they know that you'll buy it from them. You know, like we have uh, a set of like some electronics type of things that we constantly sell. So we, you know, when they get the load in, they tell us, hey, we got the load in that stuff you like. I'll keep it here when you come and buy. You know, those type of relationships pay for themselves. You know, because it works out for your supplier because they get to get rid of it quickly. And it works out for you because then you're not uh, bidding against other people to get good, to get good merchandise. So, all right, guys. So that's my recap of the Extreme Unboxing Show 7 and 8. I will have some more structured videos coming out soon. I've had people send me emails asking me to do certain subjects and I will be working on those as well. Um, what happened obviously with the pandemic that slowed a lot of things down for me. Um, uh, just because it meant that I had to stay home and, and be a mom and a teacher. Uh, so it took a lot of time. So I'm really just making sure that business is getting done and YouTube. Yeah, it's business, but that's not really what pays me. So that's uh, why things kind of got a little slowed down. And for me, uh, school was supposed to start for the kids on the 10th of August. Then they changed it and we're going to make it on the 24th of August. Then they changed it again and it's supposed to be next week on Monday, which is August 31st. I don't know what's going to happen when these kids are going to technically get back to school, um, but they are going to be um, doing remote. Uh, I have to be around for that and get into a flow with them so that we know what we're doing for school. And then once that happens, then I can actually devote time on doing more videos, putting more things out because they will be working on schoolwork. Uh, which which will keep them occupied, and then I'll be able to work on on more videos and things like that. So my plan was to get started early August, uh, but school ch switched and changed all of that. So just wanted to let you guys know. Um, feel free to keep emailing me. Um, people email me a lot. Um, I've been getting a lot. I've gotten more emails in this pandemic time period of asking for help and questions. I've had people offer me money to help them. Um, I do not do coaching um, uh, with this. Um, I did at one point, uh, but coaching, I take that real serious and I put a lot of time into it. So I would expect you to put a lot of time into it. Um, I used to have a rule that after that you paid for three sessions. And then after the sixth session, if you did not do the things that I told you to do, we were done because you're wasting your money and wasting my time because I want a person that is able to say, yeah, she coached me. Look what I'm doing now. You know? Uh, so I am not doing coaching. I don't really have the time for that at this point. Um, I have a lot of other things going on other than this. So, but if you have a question on a topic or you would like for me to um, do a video on a certain topic, feel free to ask. If Because if you have that question, someone else does. And I like to give the real, the real truth. You know, I'm not going to glamorize this and say, oh, it's so sexy to do this. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> you know, that's why I'm really giving out that cautionary tale about buying uh, salvage because salvage is not always, does not always work out the way it worked out in this show. I'm just letting you guys know right now. Uh, so, 
All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed and you want to uh, know when I upload, hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you want to follow me on all the Internet, you can feel free to look in the description and you can follow me on on all the social medias. Um, I kind of I do try to post at least a couple times a week. I'm not one of those crazy people that will send you a bajillion emails, things like that. If you want to follow that way, you can do that as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back again. Bye.